Hello everyone! This is going to be a little bit of a different video again because uh, one of my fellow master gardeners turns out to be a local celebrity chef. I was so excited and I didn't even know until a couple weeks ago when we were doing the farmer's market with our master gardener's booth and she came to do a demonstration of her cooking skills and of course I tried all her food. It was awesome and I bought her cookbook. Now I say cooking lightly because she's actually a raw vegan chef which is really cool and she had all kinds of vegetables there and different kinds of nut cheeses and just so many good things to eat that I wasn't the only one gobbling up the food <laughs> over at her demonstration table. She has been on a couple different local stations for their morning shows, giving demonstrations of her food and her recipes. She also has her own website, which I will link below. And I just think that's totally cool. And I was so excited to find that out. And I thought it would be really fun to try one of her recipes on my channel. And here's her cookbook that I bought from her. Now, you may be wondering, especially if you're a longtime subscriber, but Lita, I know that you are not a raw vegan. Uh, yeah, I mean, I still eat meat and I cook my food, but I, as some of you know, am lactose intolerant and I've always been looking for good cheese substitutes. And boy was her cheese substitute so good. I absolutely loved it. And it's always a good idea that even if you just eat meat occasionally, like me and Mitch, or if you have it every single day, or even with every single meal, it's always a good idea to add some uh, fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. And there's really not a better way to do that than by someone who already knows exactly what to do with that vegetable and how to make it taste good, even raw. So that's what we're gonna look at today. And I'm really excited because a lot of the dishes that is in this this cookbook look really good and are things that I would definitely incorporate into my regular eating habits. Now I do have her information here don't worry I will put that um, in the description box below so that you can go ahead and go to that easier. Um, this I thought would be a really good dish to start with so we're gonna be doing this lasagna there's a picture of it right there and there's one reason why I decided to go with this recipe and it's because of the two cheese recipes that go into this dish. Now I'm not going to flip through the entire book like I normally do or most of the book like I usually do when I'm doing a cookbook review because I kind of want to leave some secrets because you know this is a cookbook that a fellow master gardener um, is selling and so I don't want to give up all of her recipes. However, if you do go to that website that I'll link below, she has tons of videos and recipes uh, of the food that she makes on there so you can feel free and go to that website and make all kinds of dishes that she has listed herself. Now I'm excited to get going. I've got our ingredients, uh, most of our ingredients out and I've also got this guy so I think we are ready to get started because I'm hungry and I really really want to try this. So I'm going to go ahead and start by making the ricotta cheese first. I've already got one cup in here. I'm gonna add the other one. <clears throat> I'm gonna add some garlic to taste. Now you know I love garlic, so I'll probably put a little bit extra. We've got our Himalayan salt that I went ahead and pre-ground. We'll put in our water. Then we'll put in the juice of one lemon and this will be ready to turn on, which I will spare you because wow, is this thing noisy. So when we come back, this should be nice and ready to be called ricotta cheese. And we're back. It didn't take long at all, so that I am thankful for, but it looks nice and creamy. Let's go ahead and pour it out into a bowl and see how we did. 
Oh, that is beautiful and nice and creamy. Has the texture of ricotta cheese and it tastes really good. So let's go ahead. I am going to rinse this out and we will start on our second one. Okay, and now we are ready to make our Ramajan, which I love that name for it. So we're gonna start out with our nutritional yeast. Somehow I ground out the exact amount of Himalayan salt I would need for both recipes, so that's awesome. <laughs> and then we'll put four cups of cashews. Now that does seem like a lot, um, but these cashews and this cheese uh, will last you for a while. Um, cashews can be pretty expensive unless you can find them in bulk, but you may actually be able to shop around online to see if you can get these a little bit cheaper. And that's it. No liquid for this one because we want it to be like that um, grated Parmesan you get in like the shaker bottle. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on again. I will spare you <laughs> that ear torture. And then when we come back, this should be Parmesan. And we have our Ramajan. That took um, just a few seconds also I mean it really pulsed uh, through this really fast which is kind of surprising because you will notice um, I do not have a Vitamix I've got the clean blend now this wasn't the cheapest model that you can get but it also isn't the most expensive which means you know sometimes um, it may have a little bit of some problems with some, you know, recipes that need it emulsified or something like that. However, for the price, I think it does a really good job. Now, if you've got one of those uh, older model Vitamixes, you don't even have to worry about it because that thing just zips through anything. So if you ever happen to find an older model Vitamix that is in really good working condition on eBay or a yard sale, snap it up because those things are wonderful. Now we're going to move on to our tomato base. I've got about three cups of tomatoes in here, um, which is a great thing because I had some garden tomatoes I needed to use up pretty fast. And we're going to put in our garlic, which you know me, I'm going to go for that extra. <laughs> We've got our salt. Now you can use dates to sweeten this or agave. I'm going to go for the agave and I'm just going to eyeball the uh, teaspoon. We've got our olive oil. And as far as the seasonings um, like the cayenne and the basil and oregano, those are to taste according to the recipe. So I'm going to kind of eyeball this and kind of just go with what I know me and Mitch will like. As far as the cayenne, I'm just gonna put a little bit. I don't like a lot of hot things, so I'm just gonna start out small. Uh, I might put a little bit more and just see. And we're going to blend this up. I will taste it, see if it needs anything else. And when you guys come back, this should be a tomato sauce. So I may have gotten a little overzealous with the tomatoes. Um, I made it kind of watery, but it still tastes really good. So I'm going to leave it and then probably next time I make this, I'll only use two tomatoes instead of the three tomatoes um, that I put in here. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to clean up my mess. I made a pretty big one here. And when we come back together, we'll go ahead and actually put the lasagnas together and do our taste test. We are ready to start. I've already got everything laid out that we're going to need except for one thing. So let's go outside and take a field trip. We're in the garden because Jane recommended topping the lasagna with some shredded basil. And you know, I've got so much of it. So that's going to be a great excuse to use some. Let's go ahead and pick some leaves and then we'll go inside and actually put the lasagna together. Mm. 
And now we're complete and we can begin. As far as the slices of the zucchini, I just used my handy knife and just kind of cut them thin. But if you're gonna make a, you know, quite a few of these, I would highly recommend a mandolin. I'm just doing the one zucchini, so, you know, I was just kind of in a hurry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I really want to try it, so I just used the knife. Okay, let's go ahead and start out. I'm just going to make one for now, uh, just so we can do our taste test. So we're going to spread some of the ricotta on there, some of our tomato sauce. Top it with a noodle. We'll spread with even more of our ricotta. Now we can use our avocado slices. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of our tomato sauce on top of the avocado. Now we layer that with another noodle. And we're gonna garnish that with some fresh tomato slices. We'll sprinkle it with some of our basil and then some of our Ramajan cheese. That looks beautiful. I cannot wait to sink my teeth into this. And we are finally ready. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. It's just a beautiful picture on a plate. I cannot wait to eat this. Okay, let's go ahead and try our first bite. Mm. That is perfection. So there's so many textures going on. I so wish you guys could try this because the textures are so good together. You've got your, your cheese and your avocado just kind of smooths that out with that tomato sauce shining through. And then that fresh basil. If you do make this, do not skip the fresh basil because, wow, did that really just put so much flavor burst in your mouth. It's unreal and it's so good. Oh man, I just had to do a second bite. I could not resist. <laughs> So this, to me, is such a good way to use up a lot of produce you might have in your garden, especially your zucchinis and your tomatoes, because sometimes zucchini can just completely overwhelm your garden and just produce like crazy. And tomatoes can be the same way, where one tomato plant can just put out so much you can't keep up with it all. So if you get tired of your standard uh, tomato or zucchini dishes, this is such a great and refreshing palate cleanser um, and such a good change to that to use up a lot of that produce. Plus, it is so super healthy for you. I think this would be an awesome addition just by itself as a main course or if you want to turn it into like a side dish as a kind of salad to go with some other dishes that you might be serving that day. So there you go. I highly recommend trying this because it is so good. You can find her recipes on her website. You can also find them in her cookbook, which is also uh, on her website. And if you're in the area, she also gives classes, which I've heard from some of the other master gardeners are really, really good. And she's a great teacher. So I would highly recommend checking that out too. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you try this because oh my gosh you will thank me especially with that basil. <laughs> so I'll see you in next episode. Thanks for watching this one. Bye! And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, 
Here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.